Hello viewers! As you probably know, the radiator fan is one of the most important cooling system components and with it not working, your car will quite likely overheat at one point. Even more, this may also affect the aircon's performance and cause other issues. So to prevent this from happening, you'll surely want to figure out why the radiator fan in your car has stopped working and more importantly, how to fix it. And that's exactly what we'll find out in this video, so keep on watching. First things first, let's go to a list of usual suspects, so to say, all of which could potentially cause the radiator fan to stop working. Number one, we have the fuses, whose job is to protect almost anything electrical in a car. If there is an electrical surge going toward a piece of electronic equipment, the fuse cuts out power supply to it and saves it from destruction. This is what we call a blown fuse. A broken fuse is not a big deal and replacing one doesn't cost a lot of money. So if your fan is not working, check the car's owner manual and find the fuse for the radiator fan controller or the fan itself. The fan itself often uses a large fuse of around 50 amps, while there may also be a separate small fuse for the fan control module. Remember that if the fan fuse has blown, there may be a problem with the cables or the radiator fan, which we'll cover a bit later. Next, we have a coolant temperature sensor, which measures how hot is the engine. This is then used by the ECU or, in some cars, a separate control module to determine when to start the fan. If the coolant temperature sensor is broken and won't show the correct engine temperature, the control unit or fan control unit will not know when to start the radiator fan. Some cars use separate engine coolant temperature sensors for the radiator fan and for the ECU. Then we have the coolant level, which, if low, could be pushing air into the cooling system and the coolant temperature sensor will not read the coolant temperature correctly. So if that's the case, you'll need to top up the coolant reservoir. Otherwise, your engine could overheat, which might lead to significant damage if you're unlucky. For instance, if it seizes, you'll be left with a hefty repair bill. Now we come to the obvious, the radiator fan itself, which may be broken. In most cars, there is an electric motor inside it that spins the blades. And just like any motor, its internals can wear out as the time goes by, preventing the fan from spinning at full speed or at all. Also, some cars and trucks have a fan driven by the engine itself, with a hydraulic coupling between them responsible for engagement. Should this coupling develop a leak, the oil will eventually drip out and it won't be able to transfer the power to the fan anymore. Because the radiator fan often draws so much current, there is a relay that powers it. And of course, this relay can get damaged, causing the radiator fan not to start. The fan relay is often located in the engine compartment fuse box, but the best way is to check the repair manual to find out its exact location. As discussed earlier, some cars have a separate control module specifically for the radiator fan operation. This control module is often installed in the engine compartment, exposed to heat and dust, which can cause it to break after a while due to the corrosion and other damage. Lastly, as with anything electrical, you could have a wiring issue or a poor connection. With that in mind, check the wires going to the radiator fan from the controller or relay. Also, check the connection plugs for signs of corrosion. And in the end, check the contacts on the relays and the control unit. Checking the wires with a multimeter is often not very effective because you have to stress test the wires to see if they work. But as a quick test, however, you can check with a multimeter if power is coming to the radiator fan. Ok, having found out all about possible causes, it's now time to get a bit more practical and try to fix the radiator fan that's not kicking in. And we start with simple things, with fuses being the first on the checklist. For this, you'll have to look for a large fuse that powers the fan itself. It will be between 30 and 50 amps and it's usually a larger fuse located in the engine compartment. But to find the exact location in your car you need to check the owner's manual. And in most cars there will also be one or two smaller fuses for the radiator fan control module. If you find a blown fuse you may want to inspect the wiring and try to figure out why it blew. Sometimes, however, a blown fuse may just be a temporary problem. The next step you want to do is to check the coolant level. If the coolant is low, it can cause many different problems with the radiator fan. Checking the coolant level is easy, just pop the hood and locate the coolant reservoir. You will see a max sign on the reservoir and sometimes a minimum sign as well. Make sure the engine is cold and open the container carefully. And then fill it up with antifreeze up to the maximum mark. 
One way to determine if the coolant temperature sensor is the problem is to disconnect it. In most cars, the radiator fan should start when the coolant temperature sensor is disconnected and the car is running. But before this, you need to find out which of the coolant temperature sensors controls the fan, as there may be a separate one for the engine control module and the radiator fan control. Also, have in mind that disconnecting the coolant temperature sensor that uh, gives signal to the engine control module may result in a check engine light on the dashboard. Then we have the trouble codes, which may shed some light on the problem, especially in newer cars where everything is computer controlled. This is also true for radiator fan issues, which are often operated by the ECU, which will probably know why it isn't working. For example, if the engine control module stores a trouble code on the coolant temperature sensor, it can also cause the radiator fan to malfunction. To read the fault codes you need to use an OBD2 scanner and you can either buy one to use at home or go to an auto repair shop so they can read the codes for you. If you tried all the things above but still can't figure out what's causing the fan not to start, it's time to start with some more advanced diagnostics. To find out what is wrong now you need to use a multimeter and measure the wires with a radiator fan wiring for your vehicle. This can be quite difficult if you have no knowledge on automotive diagnostics, so if that's the case you may want to skip to the next step. Using a multimeter you must first measure the power and ground wire coming to the fan. And if you have both this when the fan should start you need to replace the radiator fan. But if not getting any power here you need to move on to diagnosing the fan relay and to find out why it won't activate. The next thing to do is to test the relay, which is often a simple job assuming it's a 4 pin variant. Remove the relay and supply 12 volts to the pins 30 and 85. Ground pin 86 and check for voltage coming out of pin 87. It's even better to connect the pin 87 to something that draws a lot of current like, for example, the radiator fan. Another thing you can do is to jump start the fan. To do so, unplug the fan connector and hook the fan directly to a fuse 12 volts wire and a ground wire. This in fact is the fastest and easiest way to test the fan. However, be extremely careful with your hands while doing so, as the radiator fan will be on full speed when and if it kicks in. Lastly, should all this fail, it might be a good time to have a car checked by a professional. The fact is, fixing problems on modern cars can be quite difficult due to all the electronics and seasoned mechanics have thousands of hours of training in automotive diagnostics, allowing them to quickly pinpoint problems like this. Therefore, it doesn't necessarily have to be more expensive to get the help of a mechanic, instead of making a bad diagnosis and replacing the wrong parts all the time. Ok, there you have it, that's how you fix a broken radiator fan. I hope this video was helpful and that your car isn't overheating anymore. If so, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. But if not, a whole lot of other things could be causing the issue. So to continue troubleshooting, check out other videos here or visit our site mechanicbase.com for detailed automotive repair guides. Bye!